Good morning, and today we're going to have a look at um, how to set up an account in Tinker. So first of all, you go to the website tinker.com and you click on sign up. And we're going to go to student account. Unless you, if you already have an account, you can just sign in. But assuming you don't, you go to student account and you create a new username and I'm going to try the name um, Elizabeth Smith. Okay, and that one is all right. And a password, I'm going to write immersive. And that's okay. All right, so make sure you write those down so that you remember them. Okay, that's just a password, a random password I made up. You should probably use your um, your school password, your school's, I'm sorry, username. You should probably use your school username and uh, you don't have to show the password. You can unclick it here. Okay, so it's secret. Um, but this is just a temporary account when in September when we go into the real school activities and then you can apply either through your IM teacher or through your homeroom, your individualized teacher, and they'll be able to set this up for you. So we click next. How old are you? Now I'm going to assume most of you are nine or 10. So I'll write in 10. And because I'm saying I'm 10, I need um, an adult's permission to do this. So I put in my email, or in your case, it would be your parents' email. And I go to join Tinker. Okay, so now that's ready to go. But it says I can't actually do it unless I get the approval from my parents. So I'm gonna bring up my parents' email. And wait for it to arrive. Oh, not there yet, once again. Okay, I just had to pause my video there for a moment. Um, my school account did not work because uh, I guess we already have a different system set up there for the school. So I sent this to my personal email, sinead.leesnetroy at gmail.com. And now if I go to my email box, you'll see it says, Tinker, please verify my Tinker account. So I'll open that up, verify my account. And I want to follow my uh, child's progress. And create a password. Put in my name. And my password. Confirm it. Notify me when my child completes a lesson. Notify me when new learning modules become available. Um, I'm going to click that for now, but you may want to go back and change that afterwards because you get a lot of notifications from them. So save. And if you want to, down at the bottom of the screen, um, you can also add another child if you want to. Or that's it. You're all set. Okay, so let's go back to the dashboard. And I'm going to sign in as Elizabeth Smith. Logging out of my parent account and logging into somebody's account. All right, so this is Elizabeth Smith's uh, new profile and Elizabeth Smith is going to start with Code Monsters. So I'll click Start. Now there's going to be a lot of loud music as you do that. So you can just turn down your volume. And it says, click to Welcome to Code Monsters. To get started, click on the red node on the map. 
we close that chat box and start. Over here, welcome. And here on the top, you'll see all the steps to go through the lesson. Number one. I'm waiting for it to load. All right, and we're off. Thank goodness you're here. I'm just going to turn down my sound a little bit again. Okay, click anywhere to continue. The town is under attack by rival code masters from the glitchers. I guess what they look like. Oh no, they've sent a Rexpulsion to deal with us. You'll have to use my Mantisar to handle this. Whistle. Different monsters have different abilities. Strike is a normal attack for the Mantisar. Attach the strike code block to the on my turn hat block. Drag the strike box. So I'm dragging it over. Attach it to the on my turn hat block. And you can see it actually shows you and it uh, then it gives you the instructions. You can read the instructions or you can just copy the actions. So it's great even for non-readers. Great job. When the play button is pressed, the Mantisaur will perform a, stri a strike on its turn. When you're satisfied with your battle progress, press the play button to begin. Okay, so let's give it two strikes. I don't know if I can do that. No, I can't. Okay, so we'll click. Okay, Rex Potion. You saved us. The town was being attacked by a Rexpulsion owned by some no-good litchers. You used the shopkeeper's Mantisar to fight off the Rexpulsion and save the city. Yay. And now we're on to lesson two. Click on the red button to begin lesson two. Takes a moment to load. That's pretty impressive the way you took care of that Rexpulsion back there. Rexplosion back there. Click anywhere to continue. Mantisars are weak against fire creatures, but somehow you still pulled it off. The glitchers haven't learned their lesson yet. They're sending over a magical creature called a magic core now. Magic creatures are weak to nature creatures like our Mantisar friend. Of course, we're not talking about real magic here, it's just meaning pretend. This will be good. You can learn about elemental attacks while you take out this next monster. Use my Mantisar. Use the power of nature to protect this city from harmful magic. And now we get on to the coding part. And I'm just going to stop the recording here. You guys can continue by yourselves.